Hello. Uh, good morning to everybody. So I'm uh, really very happy to be here to talk to you and give the presentation on empowering small farmers through affordable technologies for increasing farm productivity and income. Uh, before I start my main presentation, I would like to uh, say in few seconds about our uh, company. Okay, I think. <clears throat> okay, so we are a $1.2 billion uh, company. Our major uh, flagship business, what we do is offering efficient water management solution in agriculture. Uh, with the 50 percentage of our turnover comes from the, our uh, flagship business, 20 percent comes from our uh, pipes business, and another 20 percent comes from our uh, food processing uh, business. Balance 10 percent comes from our solar powered pumps. In fact, we are world's largest solar pump manufacturers in the world. And uh, with the 150,000 tons of uh, mango processing capacity, we are uh, number one in terms of uh, total capacity in the world. With 150,000 tons of onion uh, dehydration facility, we are again number three in the world. Uh, actually, we have been uh, spare, spearheading uh, this micro-irrigation technology, or more so offering efficient water management solution in agriculture business throughout the world. We operate through 30 uh, manufacturing plants all over the world with through 15 subsidiaries. Now I'll uh, go to our my main presentation on empowering small farmers. So I would like to take three or four phrases from this topic. One is increasing farm productivity. Number two, affordable technologies. And number three, empowering small farmers. Uh, I specifically mentioned increasing farm productivity because I didn't mention crop productivity. Using our technologies, efficient water management solution in agriculture technologies, effectively speaking, micro-irrigation, how we are going to uh, do justice for this topic. That's what my main topic. Talking about uh, small farmers, as uh, last two days of deliberations, everybody talked about small farmers. Just to put everything in a small capsule in one slide, there are 80, uh, there are about 570 million farm holes in the world. Out of which 83 percentage of farm holdings having less than two hectares, but uh, they cover only 12 percentage of total operating area in the world. But these small farmers they produce 70 percentage of world's food requirement. So this is one side on the small farmers. Then talking about the water scarcity in the world, as you all know probably. In the world, only three per, three percentage of the world water is being used for total consumptive purpose. Even in the three percent, one point seven percent is in the uh, glaciers. So one point three percentage is the total water availability which we can use it for human consumption as well as in agriculture. And uh, more so, out of this one point three percentage of total water availability, seventy percentage of water is being used in agriculture. So that means it's more important when you say water in agriculture, you say water for the future. At the same time, the per capita water availability in the world is coming down. Even if you name any country, China, India, Pakistan, UK, any country, for example, in India, 3.1 thousand cubic meter in 1975, it has come down to 1.9 thousand cubic meter in 2000. And then it is expected to be only 1.4 thousand cubic meter per capita in 2025. So it is very important that one way there is uh, small farmers or another way there's a water capacity or water scarcity in the world. Another way is how do we merge these two things? That is how we can increase the farm productivity given this scenario. So we introduce micro irrigation technology. Uh, probably in the next three minutes, those who know more about micro irrigation, you have to bear with me. This is for those people who are not initiated into micro irrigation as a concept. Because in the last two days of our in our booth, I get uh, questions from 
I thought micro irrigation is only for uh, you know fruit crops, white space crops. Uh, whether micro, what is micro irrigation? Those, those kind of questions I used to get. So that's why I included these slides only yesterday. So the technology it has become disruptive, disruptive in a sense, disruptive in the way we have been uh, doing agriculture so far. For example, this technology was invented, if you can say, in 1964, only to save water in the deserts of Israel. But the technology which was in initially invented only to save water, it has grown over the years. It has grown over the years. It has evolved. Not only it saves water, but also it increases the productivity. It does not even increase the productivity alone. It gives a lot of many more benefits, as we are going to see one by one now. So essentially, what we are doing in micro irrigation, if you see that how the water is being saved, traditionally through furrow irrigation or flow irrigation, nearly 40 to 45 percentage of water is being lost through seepage and percolation. 15 to 20 percentage of water is lost through evaporation. Essentially, through drip irrigation, what you are doing, going to do is you are going to save this 50 to 60 percentage of water because you are supplying water through closed uh, pipes. Then you are not exposing the water either to evaporation or uh, to the seepage. That's how essentially you are going to save water through micro irrigation. So in the flow irrigation, the water use efficiency only hardly 30 to 35 percentage. The other form of micro irrigation called, called uh, sprinkler irrigation because there is also a loss in uh, seepage to 10 to 10 15 percentage and uh, loss in evaporation 10 to 15 percentage there the water use efficiency is almost 70 percent but in drip irrigation because you are not exposing any kind of water anywhere from the water source to the roots of the plant you are not exposing to sunlight you are not exposing to the ground so that's why the water use efficiency in a drip irrigation is 90 percentage. That is effectively the reason why you are getting more productivity, why you are saving a lot of water. So though for those for people who are little in, not initiated into micro irrigation, if you understand the principle of micro irrigation or more so drip irrigation, then you will be able to appreciate the technology much better. So traditionally, conventionally, we apply water only to the soil. We don't apply water to the root. So when you apply water through the soil unnecessarily, as I said, the lot of loss is there. Then more so, the, I, I, I said earlier, the technology which was evolved originally to save water, it has gone beyond. It has evolved itself. So you also apply fertigation through the, you also apply fertilizers through uh, drip lines. So what happens traditionally when you, sp sp when you broadcast the fertilizer, again, 40 percentage is lost. Because it falls on the, the space between two crops, uh, two rows of the crops, then again it gets laid down. And then it unnecessarily contaminates the uh, water. So there effectively you save fertilizer, you save fertilizer also, and you save your uh, uh, water quality also. And then another thing is it delivers water exactly at the root zone, not only the water along with the fertilizers. So uh, this drip irrigation also helps in precision farming because it applies exact precise quantities of what is water I mean, water and uh, fertilizer what is needed for the crop so what is the net result you get more crop per drop of the more crop per drop so this is essential principle so thereby only you get more productivity you save a lot of fertilizers you save a lot of energy because you are not going to uh, give so much of uh, you are not going to use so much of power uh, to uh, pump water because of water water needed is 50 percent less so you pump only that much of less uh, water so thereby you save a lot of uh, power so if you understand the principle behind this technology you will appreciate the, this technology more and more so again in a simple two minute video i'll show how exactly this duplication is being installed in the field The Jain drip irrigation system is a choice of successful farming. Pumping unit is used to lift the water from source and convey it to the field through various essential components, bypass mechanism.
to adjust the flow and pressure. Water is filtered through the hydrocyclone filter or sand separator to remove the sand particles. Sand filter to trap the vegetative matter. Fertilizer tank to inject the fertilizer. Screen filter to remove the fine particles. Air release valve to remove the air vacuum from the pipeline. By the network of main line, sub main line and lateral uniformly over the field. The laterals are spaced as per the crop geometry and water is distributed uniformly into the crop road zone as per the crop water requirement. Optimum and slow application of water and fertilizer enhances the crop yield, improves the quality, higher income of farmers and ensures more crop per drop. Yeah, so what are the main uh, advantages of irrigation? So of course I explained to you about uh, saving in irrigation water up to 50%, saving in uh, uh, in, increase in the yield enhancement even from uh, starting from 20 percentage even up to 50 percent there are some farmers who uh, get more than 100 percent yield increase also over the normal uh, practice then it enhances fertilizer and chemical uh, application it efficient with fertilizer and uh, chemical application because you save nearly 40 percentage of fertilizers it improves pest and disease control because you are effectively controlling the microclimate of a crop by not applying too much of water so thereby you are avoiding more pest and diseases attack. Then it discourages weed growth because of less water or the correct amount of water. It improves the quality of the produce. Of course, it, uh, you, al you also save a lot of uh, energy by pumping less water, what is exactly needed for the crop growth. It re reduces the labor cost. In fact, again, to talk about reducing uh, labor cost, the technology which was invented to save water, it also increases yield improvement or it also saves labor. In most of the time in India, farmers who go for depurgation, apart from the two major benefits, increasing uh, yield improvement as well as water saving, because they don't have farm labor to manage water management on an everyday basis, they go for depurgation. That's what I'm saying, it has evolved over the time, the technology of depurgation. Then it can be applied to any kind of terrain. It's, uh, also, it uh, maintains soil health, as I mentioned to you that. So water saving in different crops, again, this is for those uh, who asked whether this can be used for any crop. If you see here water saving, you take any crop, broccoli, bottle gourd, table grapes, 48% water saving, bendy, onion, for, for potato, 40% water saving. In other crops like banana, papaya, sugarcane, you name any crop, there's a water saving because of drip irrigation, because of the principle uh, which I talked about. Uh, again, more crops in terms of yield increment, banana, 52% yield increase, uh, bottle guards, 47%, table grapes, bendy, onion, potato. You name any crop, there's a yield increase from the uh, lower level of 20%, even up to 50% or much more. Again, some more crops, castor, broccoli, sweet corn, radis, watermelon, turmeric, some more crops, the list goes on. The list go, again goes on. Chili, 45% yield increase and 63% of uh, less water usage. Brinjal, cabbage, cauliflower, rich cod. Okay, the list goes on. This is for drip irrigation. Even for sprinkler irrigation also, this is useful for crops like uh, wheat, vegetables also you can use, groundnut. So there's an yield increase of, uh, I mean, 66% in some places and water saving of almost on average 25% of water saving. So that means one way I talked about water scarcity, then use of water in agriculture, which is very huge. Other way, the technology, I talked about how do we increase the farm productivity using drip irrigation. Uh, to give you more uh, uh, sanctity for what I'm talking about in India, there is uh, approximately something like, it's estimated to be 9.2 million hectares are under micro irrigation. Out of which 4.4 million hectares is in drip irrigation and 4.8 million hectares is under uh, sprinkler irrigation. Okay, we should uh, give credit to our government, central government, state government with the subsidy program as well as from the initiative of all the companies involved, initiative of, uh, I mean, we 
we are supposed to be the pioneer in india in promoting uh, drip irrigation so with all our efforts with the farmers initiative this is uh, possible this is what we want to replicate in almost all the countries in southeast asia and almost all the world so this is a real proof that drip irrigation is for any crop in the world i have not purposely talked about rice so far which i will explain in detail in the rice ecosystem how this uh, technology is going to benefit the farmers in terms of crop wise nearly 562000 hectares of uh, uh, cotton is under drip irrigation sugarcane almost 500000 again other cash crops 250000 vegetables 700000 hectares of uh, vegetables is under drip irrigation banana 400000 tons uh, 400000 hectares and fruits and other crops 1.9 million hectares so this drip irrigation in india has been there in a very aggressive way from 2004 onwards uh, before that it have, we have been doing lot of promotion from 1986 onwards but the government impetus has come from 2004 onwards uh, again now i'm coming to so we talked about water scarcity use use of water in agriculture then how the technology is going to increase the farm productivity now we will come to talk about how this technology again is going to be useful in the rice ecosystem so we have already found out that there's a huge number of farmers who have got land holdings below 2 hectares and in asia it is estimated that nearly 90% of farm holdings with less than 2 hectares they operate around 30% of total area in india in africa you say almost 90% of total farm holdings are less than 2 hectares they constitute major portion of the farmers who cultivate in respective countries uh, so that means in asia and africa there are more number of small farmers they cultivate more major part of their farm land so at the same time the average farm holding is decreasing so mainly in china india indonesia bangladesh pakistan philippines they are all rice growing countries so one way we need to protect this small farmers this technology is uh, size neutral that means starting from 30 square meter area to lakhs and lakhs rather thousands and thousands of hectares you can apply this technology i'm going to explain through a video subsequently how this is going to be uh, done or this was already done in some of the area in india and uh, these small farmers they produce 90 percentage of the total rice requirement in the world so it is our collective responsibility to see that we have to empower these small farmers not only the small farmers we have to empower the farmers of uh, generally using this technology so now i am going to talk about how this technology is going to be useful for in rice ecosystem so you must have come to some of you must have come to our uh, stall and then seen what kind of experiments we have done our dr soman who is our senior scientist and the president in our company he is also present here he has done the research on rice for the last 10 years and the last 3 years we have been commercializing this drip irrigation on rice in a major way so many places we have done the trials in the farmer field farmers himself they have done the tra trials they have done the uh, uh, total uh, i mean they have done the total experiment so what we recommend for rice is generally we recommend raised bed but this technology this drip irrigation can also be applied on the direct seeded rice so when you do it on the raised bed with the band with the bed width of 90 cm for clay soil 120 cm in loamy soil another same 120 cm in sandy soil raised bed you raise with a, a height of 15 cm so in between two beds you give a furrow width of around 30 cm the dripper distance is uh, for clay soil it's 50 to 60 cm because it holds water more in the loamy soil 40 to 50 cm and sandy soil 30 to 40 cm is a dripper distance so lateral single lateral is enough for clay soil it's not 120 cm sorry there's a correction it's a 90 cm for every 90 cm there is one single lateral whereas for loamy soil and sandy soil there is for every 60 cm one lateral that means two laterals in a bed the last row again liters per uh, liters per hour it's a small change it's 2 to 4 lph depending on the soil type depending on the total design it's not 4 lph for all the soil types it's 2 to 4 lph depending on the soil type and what is 
more important is even for the direct seeded rice also you can use this uh, dip technology okay so after you do the raised beds you apply you do the insulation of uh, dip irrigation for the total field like um, uh, like how i mentioned the normal dip irrigation system you can install and what is more important is following the fertigation schedule as we promote as we recommend to you is more important as much as um, uh, that much important to install the drip irrigation system so in the initial stage you allow water for transplanting little longer hours maybe 5 hours 6 uh, 5 hours or 2 6 hours so that the soil will become very wet the transplanting will be easier there were some questions in our booth yesterday what happens for the transplant machine mechanization i mean machine transplanting so in that time what do you do you do the insulation first of drip irrigation then you go for mechanized transplantation then after day after that you spread your laterals you spread your drip lines so next day onwards you need not apply water for longer number of hours you can apply water as per our recommendation maybe for 1 hour or 1.5 hours or 2 hours based on your soil type based on our irrigation scheduling what we give along with that we should not forget not to give a fertigation fertigation is also equally important so this is what you are seeing in the first slide the water is uh, standing water is there a thin film of water is there to enable easy transplantation there are subsequent uh, days you see the uh, crop growth stage which again various stages of rice under drip irrigation so almost all the areas where we have done the demonstration in the farmers field by farmers themselves you see the yield increase so at least minimum of 110 per hectare or even much more uh, than 110 per hectare we are able to get it's not only we get it's the farmers who get that yield increase because of drip irrigation so what are the advantages of uh, drip irrigation in rice apart from the regular advantages what i talked about yield increment improvement saving in water and saving in power and everything more specifically to rice is more tillers more productive tillers happen in rice and yield increases up to 50 percent which i already mentioned cleaner straw production early maturity why early maturity is important when you invest so much money in uh, drip irrigation you try to squeeze in one more crop instead of normal one crop per year or two crop per uh, year you try to include one more crop so that the farm productivity will go up so there's a uniform grain size because you apply precise amount of nutrients and water what is needed by the crop only you are uh, applying so that's how so uniform grain size is there reduced chaffiness and no need for leveling puddling etc 30 percentage of water requirement in paddy is used for puddling so you save the total 30 percentage of water requirement in the first day itself so that is the real advantage of a drip irrigation in rice more importantly which is not here in india at least the bph attack is more in the water stagnated plot or uh, wherever the water logging is there so by allowing by not allowing water to stand in the paddy crop you are uh, preventing the bph to come there and infest so there's a very very big advantage for that so here is a farmer's own experience fortunately that farmer mr rauchinaran is also here maybe if time permits i will ask him to come and talk to you at the end of my presentation so what he says is um, in his own words with my borewell source earlier i used to grow only two acres now with this drip irrigation i'm able to grow six acres that means he is able to increase his area of cultivation by three times it's not small it is in, in his own words so crop stand was uniform throughout my field during my operations so bph which i already talked about the same thing he said see see the word what he used because i'm maintaining just moisture level so indirectly what he means is i'm able to maintain the water level just at the field capacity not flooding so by maintaining the water level only up the field capacity level i am able to prevent the bph to come and attack my field and then in flooded condition he continues and says in flooded conditions algae suppresses the crop and inhibits the tiller formation whereas in aerobic he says the drip irrigation is aerobic uh, in the uh, condition so he could uh, witness more profuse tillering so for by which he is now able to get 15 percentage more productivity for the same uh, thing and when he used arise nano 
so the yield increase is 30 percentage okay so now we will come to uh, rice and wheat ecosystem so there is no point in after installing deprecation there is no point in growing only one crop so we have to see that how we can bring in more number of crops two or three so generally in india at least some part of pakistan rice followed by wheat is practice the system what you install for the rice the same system of deprecation can be used for wheat so not only wheat between wheat and rice of the next rice between wheat and rice you can go for with the same deprecation you can go for short duration pulse crop so that means with the same system you are able to maintain your sustainability of farm production so overall your farm productivity is also going to uh, go up so again coming back to my basic topic water scarcity more water which is being used in agriculture then uh, the technology the affordable technology okay i'll come to affordable technology which is later the technology which is used for yield increase so now we are able to justice my our uh, presentation so now the affordable technology now we will evaluate how much this is going to be affordable under some parameters let us say for example in scenario 1 let us look at it let us say there is a farmer who has got underground water either tube well or open well he has got so by normal deep irrigation what we call thick wall normal regular system so he can grow in all three season first season rice followed by wheat followed by pulses then this system the regular system which will use for which will be uh, there in the field for minimum of 7 to 10 years there are farmers in india who are maintaining the system for more than 10 years even 12 years or 15 years also but for our calculation sake let us consider only 7 to 10 years so by by cultivating three crops which is possible only because of a deep irrigation like this farmer mr ravichandran said he is able to double the area so if he doesn't want to double the area in the first season he can save the water for the second season he can grow wheat and then same with the same uh, saving of water he can grow pulses in the third crop so like that the payback period will be within 1 to 2 years depending on the kind of farm produce price what he gets in the market okay let us say the scenario 2 there are some farmers who are not able to uh, bear the cost of the regular system of uh, micro irrigation or deep irrigation so he wants to go in for low cost deep irrigation system so we also have that what we call is thin wall deep irrigation system so there this system again the productivity uh, water saving energy saving everything is same but only thing is this system being a thin wall tube it will last for maybe 2 to it will last for maybe as 2 to 3 years but because the price is less he can get back his money within one year but every 3 year he has to change only his drip line he need not change his motor he need not change his walls he need not change his filters nothing he will change so only the drip line alone he changes so that way his payback period is one year then let us consider the third scenario so third scenario is it's a open canal because in many places like bangladesh or uh, myanmar many places open canal system we cannot avoid because the it's uh, from the uh, from the reservoir the water is coming it's being applied so during that time the deprecation system we need not use it we should not use that we cannot use in fact because always water flooded flooded uh, water in the field so but the system what you uh, install you can use it for second season as well as third season in that sense the payback period will be 3 to 4 years and then most importantly the last scenario is where let us assume there is a rain fed area farmers are growing the staple crops like probably kambu or sorghum or whatever in that using the government participation how we can increase the productivity how we can introduce the rice system and then increase the productivity so there i am going to use our one video which will last for 10 minutes which is going to give you the total perspective about the topic what i mentioned that is empowering the small farmers for increasing the productivity using affordable technologies so let us play the video now resource to root welcome to the world's largest integrated micro irrigation project ramthal lift irrigation scheme Located at Hungun Taluk Bagalkot district of Karnataka, Ramthal project is initiated by Krishna Bhagya Jal Nigam Limited. The entire project is conceptualized on a revolutionary concept of resource to root. 
Gungun Taluk falls under the drought prone zone of the state. Farmlands are literally starving for water. Farmers mainly grow rain fed crops like gram, sorghum, chili. Thanks to the efforts taken by the government of Karnataka to alleviate the sufferings of farmers' life by initiating Ramthal Marul lift irrigation project. It was decided to bifurcate the area into East Trail Canal. The East area was planned to provide 12,300 hectares. Mulugund area was brought under the irrigation. The East Side area was awarded to Mrs. Jain Irrigation Limited. The Jain Irrigation who are the pioneers in micro-irrigation had started the work initially giving the details of the bulk water supply as well as design details of the laterals and other uh, submains and submains. Ramthal is a path-breaking community irrigation project and is one of its kind not only in India but in the world. Beneficiary farmers are getting multifold benefits like doubling income and higher profits, assured irrigation for two crop seasons, can grow cash crops, reduction in fertilizers and agricultural inputs, improvement in soil health, expert agronomical advice at their doorstep, market linkage and better price for produce. In a nutshell, Ramthal project will make agriculture sustainable and will bring prosperity for the beneficiary farmers. Government of Karnataka also benefited in many ways like increase in water use efficiency over 85% as compared to 35%, doubling the irrigable area with available water. The productivity per cubic meter of water applied is increased to 1.41 kg per cubic meter as compared to 0.28 kg per cubic meter in traditional canal irrigated projects. Equitable distribution of available water energy savings up to 50 percent minimum land acquisition and rehabilitation expenses reduced implementation time stopped migration of farmers and farm laborers overall increase in irrigated land increased cropping intensity resulting in higher agri production being a public private partnership model effective and reliable performance higher contribution to the exchequer madalina madalina tu male aga one kade one side male aadre one side male aagtirilla idakkagi ella namma raita illa ramuri gramada ella raitara yuvaka yuvakara ellaru duriyodakke goa inga bengaluru ee tarara ella bere rajyakke hogta idru aada karanadinda iga idu bandirutakkantu baala valle ide yakandre illi inde naavu iga namu obobarna namu urali obobar raitara hatta tekkara olaganda raitara idare ಇಲ್ಲೇ ಈಗ ಹನಿ ನೀರಾವರಿ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥೆ ಬಂದಿರೋದನ್ನು ಇದನ್ನೇ ನಾವು ಚಲೋತ್ನೆ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ರೀತಿಯಿಂದ ನಡೆಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಚಲೋ ಆಗಬಹುದು ಮುಂದೆ ಬರಬಹುದು ಟ್ವೆಲ್ವ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ತ್ರೀ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಹೆಕ್ಟೇರ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮ್ಥಲ್ ಈಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ಯಾಕೇಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಚುಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಕ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಕಮಿಷನ್ಡ್ ಆಪರೇಷನಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೇಂಟೈನ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಜೈನ್ ಇರಿಗೇಷನ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಎಫಿಷಿಯಂಟ್ ಆಪ್ಟಿಮೈಸೇಷನ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಕಮಾಂಡ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ಡಿವೈಡೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಫೋರ್ ಝೋನ್ಸ್ Each of these zones are then subdivided into operational blocks of approximately 100 hectare. There are 129 blocks in the entire 12,300 hectare area of East Part. Water from River Krishna is lifted from Narayanpur Reservoir to Stage 1 and flowed to Stage 2. Then from Stage 2 of West Main Canal to the sump of Ramthal Drip Irrigation Project. At the sump, water is pre-filtered through advanced Rotoclean suction filter to prevent large debris coming to the pumping machinery. Each zone has its own pumping station. There are 12 energy-efficient pumps. All pumps are operated through a variable frequency drive or VFD. Advanced SCADA system controls the operation of pumps on the basis of feedback received from pressure and flow sensors. Water is further filtered through state-of-the-art, fully automatic, online, smart, clean electric filters. Its high-quality Quadra layer stainless steel screen filters out the dirt, sand and soil particles. The smart clean mechanism of the filter automatically cleans the filter element. The filtered water further flows through high-capacity, high-strength HDPE pipe rising main. These pipes have an estimated life of 100 years. 
they can withstand abusive field conditions and are easy to repair and maintain. Water then enters the block of 100 hectare where it is again filtered through fully automatic hydraulically operated online smart clean hydraulic filter to ensure that only clean water enters the drip irrigation system. At the block entrance, pressure and flow is regulated through a pressure reducing and flow limiting valve. A pressure transmitter is used to monitor pressure fluctuations within the block. Ramthal project is operated in the most farmer friendly manner. Every farmer in the project area is separately allotted a wireless controlled automatic valve to operate the irrigation system of his farm. A fertigation unit is provided to inject required quantity of fertilizers directly to plant root zone. Every farm is provided with Jain Irrigation's most popular 5-star rated drip line. Its state-of-the-art clog-resistant dripper design provides maximum uniformity and efficient performance for years. The system is designed to produce an application rate of 2.4 mm per day in Kharif season and 4 mm per day in Rabi season with around 24 hours of operation per day. Operation of such complex system is controlled and monitored through highly sophisticated web-based IRIKAY irrigation management system. Every user can access and monitor the operation of his irrigation system through the internet. Valve operation schedules are uploaded to IRIKAY software. These schedules are then transferred to master controller called as IRI Connect Master through GSM communications. Erie Connect Master distributes schedules to each wireless remote terminal unit called Erie Connect Pro. Erie Connect Pro stores the schedules and operates the field control valves. Erie Care Master has got an excellent user management facility. All the registered users receive an SMS alert for their valve on off schedule. The user database can be easily generated and filtered according to crop, crop growth stage an area under each crop. Irike also facilitates expert agronomists to broadcast bulk messages to the farmer having specific crop regarding crop care and pest or fertilizer management. Automation machine puts it satellite mukantra on the automation wall and check it. Awalo, young Apetaka, in the other message Bartao, on young children, younger Bartao, and the number mobile game, Itara, or Prati, Jusa, Nimini, Ashkante Bartha, Etatinim Wal Chalu, manual wall of Maritana, on the automation wall. Automation wall, Yaval Chalogan message. A message bunt at Nana and a wall marshman and the automation of Malusir, Ashkoli Kauka. Either in the Nathan of Samaya, Matu, Arena, Hatu, Bullet. Ranam Bekadaga, Nirgana, Tayukolo, Kagata, Amakaya, Tarakari, Awag near Beku, Awagan Hakusko, Bekagata, Malendra, Malimelena, Adharita Marcon Kuntundra. Now you are in Kaldaga, Idi, Samatalukin Janana, Bere Kadehogi now. Jiwa on a Sagswanta Parsiti Partaide, Adakagi, Yiga Jiwa, you Rela Jane Company or Rodu Sakash, Ole can some art there. Beneficiary farmers are associated with a controlling body called Water User Association. Water User Association helps farmers to resolve their day to day issues and will control and operate the entire project. There are 28 active water user associations formed in East part of Ramthal project. Jain Irrigation Systems is providing training to each member of the water user association. Jain Irrigation is also helping the water user association to get proper market linkages for crops produced by the farmers. Our expert team of agronomists is imparting crop related training to the farmers. Farmers are also trained for operation and maintenance of drip irrigation system. Ramthal Irrigation Project is showcasing the sustainable farming effort to achieve water and food security for the nation and promises more crop per drop. Jain Irrigation is proud to be a part of this project. Jain Irrigation Systems Limited, an integrated irrigation solutions provider. 
Okay, this is a government funded project. It's a 50 million dollar project. Uh, it was already done and uh, it's uh, already up and running. So those who want to come and see that, we are always welcome. We can take to that uh, particular field. Based on the success of this project, the government of Karnataka has allocated more funds and then they approved four more projects of the same magnitude and scale. So that's what we are doing. We would uh, request all the policy makers or the government uh, authorities here, maybe you can take this concept, try to convince your people and then try to install uh, this kind of systems. So this is for wherever uh, the government funding is not available everywhere. Every government is not ready to do that. But the, still they have to manage small farmers, still they have to take care of marginal farmers. So what kind of system what we have? So for marginal farmers, uh, sorry, there's one small correction uh, for your, uh, for the organizers. I started my presentation at uh, 11.25, so still I have 10 minutes more. Um, so for marginal farmers, what kind of technology what we have? Uh, this is uh, what we call Jane drip kit. It's a gravity-based drip irrigation system. Here, there's no need for pressurized system. There's no need for pump. There's no need for motor. There's no need for power. So this the total kit comes in your boxes. So it's a do-it-yourself kind of uh, kit. Farmers can see the leaflet, and then they can install the system themselves. They have to install their own water tank, and from there, the whole components we supply. So uh, during between these two crop seasons, generally, the problem with the rice farming is after the irrigation, through canal irrigation after the first season, farmers don't know what to do. They are simply allowing their farm to be fallow lands. So they don't have uh, any money for there to uh, manage other things. Say so they live mostly through subsistence farming. In order to make them more profitable, in order to give them more income, so suppose if you give this kind of less value, uh, less cost system, which uh, does not need any power, so the farmers will get some money out of their uh, produce. So this is mainly used for vegetables. It can also be used for uh, cotton. It can also be used for pulses where the water requirement is less. It can also be used for as a survival irrigation. So it comes from uh, 30 square meter uh, size to up to 2,000 square meter size. So even if your farmer has got one hectare or two hectare, at least in between season, uh, the first season and the next season, you can grow for this kind of uh, vegetable, short duration vegetables or short duration pulses using uh, 2,000 square meter of uh, the area, I mean, out of his own acre, and try to get some income out of his uh, uh, farm land. So we have again thin wall and thin, uh, thick wall. Thick wall is uh, costing something like uh, four hundred dollars, and the thin wall costs uh, one hundred and fifty dollars. It's uh, it's not very costly, uh, but it will be very useful for the marginal farmers. So what is the advantage? There's no electricity needed, as I mentioned. It can be easily carried forward. It it is very affordable and very less investment uh, for the farmers. So they can get the uh, return uh, within one year, within one crop season also. So what will happen if uh, the farmers, in, the, in this particular system, farmer has to literally lift the water manually and pour it into the tank. So for those farmers who are not even able to lift the water, but if they can spend a little bit more on the solar pump, which is costing, uh, say, $400, 0.1 and a half power. So that means with the water source, they can attach to the solar pump then it can be automatically, the water tank can be automatically uh, filled on a periodical basis. So this is what is, is happening in India. We have been selling. Recently, we have sold 4,000 uh, solar uh, kits to solar pump as well as uh, dip kits to uh, Mozambique. So like that, many countries now are following this. The, again, what will happen to those farmers who doesn't have money to invest in solar pump? For those farmers who doesn't want to lift water, so for that, we offer a foot pump. Using the foot pump, they can lift water and put it in the storage tank. And thereby, with all the irrigation components, the uh, all fields will be irrigated. So the last slide, how uh, we have talked about enough about small farmers and technology, water scarcity, how this technology is going to help the farmers. How do we enable them? How do we empower the small farmers? So this is where, the, as a responsible citizens, we all should come together. For, from the government side, from the corporate side, and then from the farmer's side, and maybe from the scientist side also. So depending on the criteria, for example, in the scenario one, if you take, if there's an open canal first season, then second season, 
uh, they can go in for uh, any crop using drip irrigation. But farmers don't have the money to pay that. So corporates who does co contract farming, they can probably invest, the initial investment they can do to help the farmers to have the system, and then they can get the money back from the farmers at the time of their purchase of produce. So this way we can enable the farmers to not only to grow only one crop in the main season, we, uh, we can enable them to grow, we can empower them to grow second season or third season, thereby increasing their income. Then in the scenario two, again, if he has got open well, it's a very, very clear case. So open well is there, he has got his own uh, power source, but he doesn't have money to buy the system. Even in that case also, corporates can come in, they can buy the produce, they can, uh, invest, they can initially invest the money for the duplicate system. What is the advantage for uh, the corporates? What is the advantage for the corporates? The advantage is they're, they are ensuring their produce supplies, otherwise which is very difficult. So that is uh, in scenario two. Scenario three, what I explained through the video, 10 minute video, the government can invest. The government can invest, thereby, though the payback period as a collectively it may be for four years or five years, but what essentially the government is doing is helping the small farmers have better income. The whole community will uh, uh, increase. So that's how uh, this particular nexus between government, corporates and farmers will help the farmers of all sizes, especially small farmers, to grow uh, more to grow more number of crops and increase their farm productivity and thereby their income. Thank you very much.